Before the New Orleans Saints were crowned this year's Super Bowl champions, myself and fellow eyeballs reporter Katie Black were privileged to be among the estimated 2,000 journalists from around the world who at times were crammed into the site of this year's Super Bowl at Sun Life Stadium in Miami Gardens to cover the Super Bowl Media Day. And for Katie and me, Media Day was a major story for us to cover. It's really been a great and awesome day. We got to meet with the players, um, we got to meet with a few journalists to see you know, if they could give us some advice. Um, and I've never really met a more spirited team than the Saints, and I learned a lot. And we weren't the only ones who thought this story was special. The network reporters and the most famous student journalists felt the same way. You interviewed Obama. How does it feel to be at the Super Bowl? Well, it feels very good because I feel delighted to be here, and I just want to get the story back to my school. Someone was asking me uh, if I could sum up this experience in one word. It's just monumental. Everything's bigger than, than usual. It's all year long, and then this sport is bigger than, you know, uh, most of the fact of how many people watch the sport. And this is the most watched event, so it's just a monumental week, and I always enjoy it. And I love Media Day every year because it's quirky, wacky, and different. Now it's time to hear from the champions on how they felt heading into the biggest game of their life. Is this like something that you had like to you? No, not right now. Uh, I think after the game, after the season, you know, I'm down just relaxing and uh, really on my downtime. And it'll probably sink in then, but right now it's really about focusing in on this game. from Miami, you know, let us in a little bit more uh, when we got here, and just to see all the different things that say Super Bowl and New Orleans Saints. I'm just happy to be here and a part of history. You know, this, is, this is huge. This is huge. We're excited for one, and because, you know, you want, you want the, the playmakers, you know, anytime the big game's on the line, you know, the playmakers always want the ball in their hands. You know, so when, when Coach Payton told me that, I was excited. You know, and so it just um, obviously excited me even more to just you know, prepare for this game and and to get lots of sleep. In the second quarter, second and goal. This time they've got the catch and the touchdown. Jeremy Shockey has a Super Bowl catch and a score, and the Saints have the lead. And starting tight end Jeremy Shockey credited himself for keeping the team out of trouble during the big week by being what he called the team's personal life coach. All the guys are staying out of trouble. They're being, they're behaving. The city, there's a lot of trouble. Uh, it's a lot of fun. People come down here on vacation. Summer, you know, great weather. What else can you ask for? And uh, for the most part, I think we've handled it well. Uh, I've seen some tips of guys that don't go to these places, look out for this guy, or don't go here. And uh, I think for the most part, it's been all right. The Saints expressed how special it is for them to be able to bring hope to their city and fans, especially after Hurricane Katrina that tore apart their city and stadium. We understand that if we win the game, it's not only us winning, you know, the city really embraces us and they feel like they win the game as well. Sitting here uh, brings so much joy to a lot of people. You know, it's just, it means so much. Being like, just thinking about that time, uh, you know, the things I lost, and you know, just, this just brings it all back together. And the hope the Saints provide to their fans was enough to capture the attention of two Alabama Deacons. season progressed, we realized that, you know, this would be a, a, an interesting cultural perspective of the connection uh, between church and faith and the Saints. In New Orleans, it's, it's kind of a unique uh, perspective. How do you see God's presence in a sport that gets so much flack for people being fake and uh, wanting you know, money and no commitment? How do you see God's presence in uh, the Super Bowl? See God's presence in the midst of it all and, and the good times and bad, God is there and He's there providing strength and support. So there is a lot of negative media attention sometimes around and on inauthenticity and those types of things, but overall, I think the players, the whole event around the NFL is a positive thing, particularly in New Orleans, you see, after the Saints made it to the Super Bowl, they're not out in the streets riding, they're out in the streets celebrating, just celebrating the victory, the unity that was in the city, and the hope that the Saints bring as a symbol for hope for the city and for the region. Meanwhile, the Saints also expressed that they wanted to bring hope to Haiti, especially Jonathan Vilma, who has friends and loved ones in Haiti. 
and he credits his parents for helping him keep his mind on football. I heard about my immediate family. I think the biggest thing was my mom and dad both telling me, look, your time right now is not now to help Haiti. Your time is to play football. Switching gears, we looked ahead to next season, raising the question about the news that the NFL is looking to expand the regular season. I don't like it, to be very honest with you. I think there's too many injuries that happen in this game, and we add two more games onto it. It would uh, definitely, um, I think, uh, knock some more people out that should be out there on the field playing. Uh, I think when you saw the Colts this year wrap it up, uh, by uh, week 15, essentially, everything that they needed to wrap up for the playoffs, we figured it out that they were so far in front in their division that weeks 17 and 18 and 19 would have been just as moot for them. So it would have been extra weeks where starters wouldn't be employed and things of that nature. And that would happen, I think, more often and, uh, and create that problem, too. I know the league is trying to do something about the relevance of the preseason, and that's one way of handling it, but I'm not that big of a fan. I think... Um as players, you know, we'll do what we can to make sure that it is, no more than anything, safe and productive for us first. Because the Saints are world champions, we thought we'd share with you some of their keys for success. I stick with the same routine. Don't don't change anything. Then be yourself. You know, it takes dedication. You know, it takes hard work, and it takes passion. You know, as well as loyal loyalty. My dad always told me if I start something, I can't quit it. You're gonna do it. Do it 100 percent. I always stuck by that. And finally, since it was media day, we seek out advice from the media professionals. So I started 31 years ago, and the business has really changed quite a bit. You know, the days of having big staffs and uh, expense accounts and all the luxuries in our business are long gone. Even the, the big salaries we once made are gone. So uh, if you want to get in the business, you got to love the business a lot. you got to enjoy what you do traditional way of doing television, doing radio, doing everything is out the window. So embrace the new media and learn to use that to your advantage because you can do something that five years ago you couldn't have done. You have access to a camera, you can put it on the internet, you have the opportunity for hundreds of thousands if not millions of people to see what you do, use it and get it out there. This concludes our coverage of Media Day. I'm Ricky Freeberry. Thanks for watching.